Hello everyone, this is Damien. This is going to be episode number six. Yes, I checked the episode number of Intermediate Java. <coughs> Sorry, I appear to be coming down with a bit of a head cold. Um, today we're going to be talking about abstract classes. What they do, how we use them, and uh, how, how we kind of make them work for us. So the first thing we're going to do... Did I say abstract variables? Abstract classes. Ugh. So, okay, first thing we're going to do, change where it says public class in car.java to abstract. So at this point, lesson.java will immediately error out. It's going to say, can't instantiate the type car. So let's talk a little bit about what that means. So when you first create a, a variable, it takes the class, so it takes the class of car in this case, and it does what's called instantiate it which means it's very similar to initialization except instantiation is when an object is created it has all the parameters methods classes um, sometimes uh, interfaces associated with that class <coughs> so abstract classes can't be instantiated meaning abstract classes can only be extended or as, as object-oriented programming better knows it, inherited by other classes. So let's start by making two new classes. So we're going to make a new class. We're going to call one Hyundai, or Hun Hyundai, 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 something like that. And we're going to just make it, say, extends car. And we're just going to make a quick default constructor for it. So we're just going to go uh, public Hyundai, and that's it. And then we're going to make one called Dodge. All right, and let's do that. Same sort of deal here. We're going to go public class Dodge, or not class, I'm sorry, public Dodge just like that. And so the only difference between these two classes is this one's going to have uh, one method in it. So we're going to do string name and this one is going to set the name to dodge, I guess. Um, okay, yeah. So let's, let's do that. Uh, actually, mm, it's difficult. Okay, yeah, so I'll, I'll actually make use of that name variable in a bit. Um, we'll say name equals dodge. Um, and we'll do this dot name. Ah! And that's in the wrong spot. Okay, so we set the name contained within the the class there to dodge. By the way, I never got around to explaining what this means to you guys. Uh, that's completely my fault. I got a little scatterbrained the other lesson. So what this actually means is when you call it this, so say we have name and this takes in string name. What the, the word this means is use the name or this variable that's existing inside the object and do something with it. So where you have ambiguity, where we have a thing called name right here, and say that this was just equal to name instead. So if that was name equals name, the this kind of differentiates between the two. So that's all it really does. It means this item that is contained inside of our uh, class or method or workspace. Um, so okay, I've, I've made the two, and so now I'm, I'm good. Um, actually, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm going to save that for a minute. So we, we create a, a car, and we can't do that. So we're going to do Hyundai. <coughs> My car equals new Hyundai. I, I really think it's Hyundai. Hyundai, Hyundai, it's... This drives me crazy. Why, why didn't I just use Toyota? Dodge my car. Two equals new Dodge. 
And so that's how we can now make two cars. So if we were to just run this and uh, do my... Actually... <coughs> okay, so let's do something along the lines of my car dot... Uh, what, what was it? Output numbers. There it is. And then the same thing with my car too. <coughs> so we save that. We give it a run. Um, oh, and that should be an uppercase C, and what's wrong with output numbers? Um, oh, right, this didn't extend car. So save all. Now we'll give it a run. And so it's asking how many wheels are on our Toyota. We'll say 100, and we'll give it 400 windows. And then the Dodge is going to be a normal 4 and 2. So, okay. It's, it's still taking in all of our stuff, despite it not being in either of these classes. So that kind of shows you guys that, you know, we can have uh, sort of a, a way of handling things. Uh, so we build one big method that holds all of our like... Or, or one big class, rather, that holds all of our similar methods and all of our similar uh, variables. And then we have child classes implement them. So let's go a little further with this. Let me kind of show you one of the things that you can do. Uh, we're going to be using this in the next lesson, by the way. Um, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and we're going to take uh, an array of type car. So we're going to go car, um, car array equals new car two. And I always forget to put my array brackets at the first part. And so we're going to say car array of zero equals my car, which is the Hyundai and car array of one equals my car two. <coughs> and that's the dodge. So now what we're going to do is we're going to say for int i equals zero. i is less than car array dot length. i plus plus. And then we're simply going to say uh, car array of i dot output numbers. So this will make more sense for us to do once we start dealing with more than just two objects. So we're going to do just like that. Say 100, 400, 2, and 4. And so once again, this is now being output based on the fact that these are both type car. It's not being so that's kind of the, the sort of catch to this, is now since these both share a parent class, we can make an array of with two different types of object. So think about that. We have a Hyundai and a Dodge, but we both know that they're cars. So we're basically teaching the computer, hey, these are cars that we're dealing with. So the, the actual object type, as long as it's extending car, we we can do that. So now let's do let's do one more thing, and we'll say um, if uh, car array of i dot name. Oh, uh, actually, I can't do that. At least not safely. So okay, uh, yeah, we can kind of do that, but. You know what? Let's save that for when I start going into um, into threads and multi-threading and how we do abstract uh, classes that will make things that are better suited for multi-threading. Um, the structure of this isn't really going to lend itself too, too nicely for that. So until I get to that point, I'm not going to really bother teaching that. Um, so next lesson, since I've, I've covered all this, 
I'm actually going to go a very different direction, and we're going to very, like really switch gears, and it's going to be very sudden. Um, we're going to start doing a bit more network-related stuff now that we've covered objects. We're eventually going to circle back to this. Uh, we're going to circle back around and go, hey, you know, we, we have all this ability to use and parse data, but we have to get to the point where we can kind of start using objects to do something before then. So with that said, I hope that you guys will continue to join me. This was, uh, this was actually a really quick lesson, so I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your afternoon. See ya.